So we're coming back to schools now. Uh, we returned this year after being off 18 months due to the pandemic, or some would say to multiple pandemics uh, that occurred across our country. What was that experience like for you as one, the first year principal, um, not having led a school prior to this, uh, this current <laughs> school year, but also yeah. coming into the school year and having to lead massive policy changes um, that impacted students, that impacted families, that impacted our staff members as well. Um, so what yeah. was that process like for you, first year leading? <laughs> Policy changes uh, for our noble community. Yeah, I think the thing I love is like it's such an opportunity to dream um, and like really reimagine what this work can look like. I would say it's hard. Absolutely. Um, and I was like, wait, it wasn't on the application that like I would be a principal <laughs> in a pandemic after 18 months. I was like, oh, could have been written. Yeah, I'm like, okay, there was like a little asterisk at the bottom, uh -huh. and like Tyler's like, hey, this is going to be the experience. But like to me, like I've really leaned into like just the opportunity to like really reimagine this work. And to me, I just continue to remember like we're doing this within the context in a country where our entire educational system has been rooted in colonialism um, and not built for students that look like our kids. And I think that's what makes the work hard and challenging, but I also think that's what makes me excited is that like I know that I'm doing work to, I heard someone say before, like we are becoming ancestors. So like I'm really working to become my ancestors while this dreams, why I am also becoming an ancestors and trying to like just leave behind something that the next generation can pick up. I always tell people we're not going to dismantle racism in our lifetime, but we're going to do some very impactful work for the next generation to come behind us and like continue to like do something even better. So I think within the context of our work and at Noble, I've been really excited about it. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. And I think We've been hearing what that meant just like throughout our nation. And I think doing all of that um, when it comes to returning to school now within the context of like reimagining what school can look like is hard. Um, but I think it's some of the most impactful work. And like to me, I'm looking forward <laughs> to when I can look back and say, yeah, y'all, we did that. It was done. You know, right now we're just in it right now. We're in it. And I think there's a lot of lessons to learn and like continue to like work to reimagine and refine our systems and structures. But like there's nothing else I think I'd rather be doing right now than this work. You mentioned it, uh, this work being hard and uh, uh, challenging, right? Um, what part of the work was challenging? Was it the dreaming part that came naturally, uh, or was it the dreaming part that was hard and the implementation was maybe a little easier? So, yeah. from your experience, right, what was the harder part, right? The dreaming part or the actual implementation? Of it? Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good question. I think the dreaming was easy. And I would, I'll name that I think we had the privilege, I would call it the privilege intentionally, to like dream remotely. Yeah. Um, because we had the time and space to really have an opportunity to reimagine. Hard part is the implementation, because I think we've done a great job at Noble, like really creating some amazing policies. And now we're really trying to now identify like, what are some of the strong systems that we can put in place to ensure that we're actualizing the aspirations that we have for our students and for ourselves, while also simultaneously um, refining our practices. Because I think there's a, a there's a fine line and a distinction between like practice and policy. And I think we have to ask ourselves, like, what are we doing to close that gap between our practices and policies while also working, making sure that we have strong systems in place um, to allow with some of those shifts. And I think the hard part is now like we're learning every day about like, here's what we can refine. And here's what we can make better while also still doing the work, which I think that was the benefit of being remotely and being able to dream is that there was a lot of things that we were able to like do. Um, while not doing it, and now we're like <laughs> dreaming and doing it at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say like definitely that implementation is like the harder part. So you talked a lot about uh, your dream. Uh, whose whose dream was that? Was it your dream solely? Was it student and family centered dreaming, or was it staff dreaming? Whose dream did we bring back to us this uh, the school year? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and I 100% would say like my dream was 100% a part of that process. And I wanted to find ways to ensure that like the things we were working to actualize was also centered on the voices of our people. So some things that I 100% did, like the moment I became principal at UIC is I had 75 one-on-one -on -one check ins with staff. I was like, hey, I want to hear from you all and really understand their experience. And then the question I asked them was like, what should we prioritize for this upcoming school year? I also did the same thing for our students. And I had one in-person listening session with our students and then also a virtual listening session with our students as well and ask them questions about their experiences. What are some things that went well and some things that can be better? But then also, what do we need, need to prioritize for this upcoming school year? Then I did the same thing with our families as well, where like I went to our um, PAC meeting and like had a conversation with them, had some good food. And we also talked about some of those same questions, like their experiences and then I intentionally asked, what do we need to prioritize? 
for this upcoming school year. And then we really use all of that to begin to like synthesize like their input to then like create like what are our priorities for this school year, which like was around like MTSS structure. So that's my next question. Yeah. What, was, what were those priorities? <laughs> Overall, like what were the themes of those listening sessions and like what did people ultimately want to have be priorities for this, this current school year? Yeah, um, it was a lot of it was around staff experience and like joy um, for both students and staff. A lot of it was also around like how a student is getting the support that they need in place. Um, some other things that folks talked about was how do we make sure that student voice is a part of like our process and like our family voices are part of our processes. And just we really found a way to like then talk through that to then create our strategic plan and then also like think through how does that align to the Noble Community mm -hmm. Pact and how does that align to really our anti-racism commitment and like really begin to try to bring in some of that language into like what we wanted to be our priorities for this upcoming school year. And so when students walk into the building, if a parent walked into the building, where would they be able to see like their feedback that was given in that dream of living at UIC? Yeah, a big piece of that is really like some of the tangible things. And I think this is part of what we did at UIC, but also part of what we did just like Global Noble mm -hmm. as a network is like things like the dress code. Okay. And like making sure that they have that. A big piece is really around positive multi-generational change, which is our mission. And a major shift that occurred from what our family said, and also what I believe is that positive multi-generational change isn't just this outcome once students leave, but it's like what students experience every day. So one thing that we continue to like really hope to actualize is the way that we create um, a sense of belonging in our school community and build relationships with students. And then the other piece, and this kind of goes back to my other point that I talked about earlier with systems, is like how do we create that predictability so our students know what to expect? Because mm -hmm. um, I think those two intersect with each other. Right. So when a, when a family member walks in, we, hi, how are you doing? Like making sure that they feel seen, they feel heard, and like their needs are being met when they walk into our spaces. It's no more like, hey, you stop and listen to me.